Hi, welcome to the first session of my new marketing strategy course. I'm extremely excited to be sharing this information. Um, this really is the culmination of some stuff that's been around for a long time and is growing and it really feels like its time is now. So I want to share this uh, material because it's so valuable. I want to share it with as many people as possible. And this is going to be a, a thinking an eight week, um, eight session course. And um, this is the first session, the introduction to marketing strategy. So let's go. We start with the question, what is strategy? What is marketing strategy in particular? Well, strategy is the method of formulating a plan to achieve something. It's as simple as that, right? So there's something that you want to achieve and strategy is how are we going to get there? How are we going to achieve that thing? Implicit in that, of course, is you need to know what it is that you want to achieve. And that's not as common as, uh, as you may think. So how will we get there uh, from here? Right. So it's just like if I wanted to uh, go and pick up something I bought off eBay from some, a place I've never been before. What am I going to do? I'm going to I'll go on Google Maps, I'll put in the, um, the postal code, I'll see how far it should take to get by car, and then I'll use my sat-nav or Google Maps on my phone on the journey, right? And that is, that is strategy. Strategy is, what time do I need to set off? What time am I, am I going to get there? What are the, you know, what could happen along the way? The thing I want to achieve is I need to be at that place at that particular time. And my strategy is, how am I going to get there? Simple as that. Okay, so that's strategy. You may also call the plan a strategy. So there's two different meanings of the word. One is the process that we follow to come up with the plan. And then you may also call the plan itself. This is my strategy that I'm following, and that's great. But the distinction is very important for reasons that we'll go into. Um, it's important to distinguish between strategy and tactics. Strategy is, this is how we are going to get from here to there. It's like you, you formulate your strategy before you start. And when you've started, that's the time to stop strategizing. And that's when you get into tactics. So tactics are concerned with the day-to-day -day decisions, the day-to-day -day actions, the responses. You know, if this happens, then what will we, we do? Okay, so in, in marketing terms, something like a, a one-time offer is a tactic. That's not a strategy, right? A one-time offer is something that you plan. It's, it's, it's a step, right? So after somebody's bought this, then you say, well, now would you like to upgrade to this for only so much? And it's like, fine. And you may remove that at, at another time without fundamentally altering your strategy. Okay, your strategy is how are we going to get from where we are now to... A point of success in the future and you can change the tactics along the way and you should change the tactics along the way in response to stuff that happens okay so strategy tactics two different things okay marketing strategy marketing strategy is, is that in the context of marketing which is effectively selling okay so marketing strategy is the process of planning how we will achieve what we want to achieve by selling something and what you could sell could be products or services or even ideas, right? And remember, always remember that, that money isn't the only currency. We live very much in an attention economy these days. So if you're asking somebody to give up, as I am with this, this video, some of their time, I'm selling you an idea and you are paying for it in attention. Attention is very valuable. It's becoming more valuable over time. Okay, so you know we sell something, and it could be paid for in monetary terms, or it could be paid for in other ways, like attention. Too many businesses go to market without any strategy at all. It's extremely common. I would say it is more common that a business has no marketing strategy at all than that, that they do. And the lack of marketing strategy is extraordinarily costly 
for many reasons. Um, if you don't know where you're going, how can you get there? If you don't know where you're going and what your journey plan is, somebody comes along with a new tactic and says, hey, if you're not using my great webinar tactic, you know, you are losing out. People saying, oh, ditch your website. You know, what you need is a funnel. And you might go, oh, oh that's interesting. I'll, I'll go and, you know, sit on your webinar. But, you know, when you have a strategy, when you know, I know where I'm coming from. I know where I'm going to. I've got a plan of how I'm going to get there. Right? Then you can say, okay, Mr. Vendor, how will the thing that you are advising me to use, which might be great, um, how will that fit? How will that serve my strategy? And you then have a basis and a means of knowing and being able to decide if this thing will be helpful to you on your mission or not. And remember, there are, you know, there are great tools out there, right? There are some, you know, tools and processes and techniques that can transform businesses. And any of those could be catastrophic for you if used the wrong way. I cannot stress this enough. We have a plethora, a multitude of tactics available to us these days, tools, platforms, themes, all kinds of amazing stuff that we have at our disposal uh, for, for marketing purposes today. Any of them could be amazing. Any of them could be awesome. Any of them could be utterly catastrophic. You could devote all your time into mastering Infusionsoft or something, but if it doesn't serve your strategy, that time could be wasted. So why is strategy so important? For this reason. This quote comes from um, Seneca the Younger, who was a, uh, a Roman, a Spanish, Spaniard originally, Roman, uh, thinker and writer and part-time stand-up comedian in the first century. He says, if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favourable. That, and I, I love this quote, I've used this quote over and over again. If you've read Save the Pixel, you will recognise it. But this quote really sums up the importance of strategy in one sentence. If you don't know what your plan is, how do you know, you know, how do you make those tactical decisions? How do you know which wind to, to take? Will this decision on this day serve me or not? And without a strategy, you have no way of knowing whether it will serve you or not. So strategy, extraordinarily important. So how do you do it? How do you come up with a marketing strategy. Obviously, that is my goal with this course to help you figure that out. But here's a high-level overview. First step, where are we now? Right? What is the situation right now? You have to be honest about the situation right now. Second step, exactly where do we want to go? It's like you know, setting out for a long walk if you want to go through the mountains, right? You need to know where are we going to go, how much time, how much energy is it going to take to get there, will we need to stop along the way, will we need to take food, water, other equipment in order to be able to get there successfully, right? Or you can just set out, get up in the morning, put your backpack on and clear off out into the hills, right? Which may be great. You just wander around, hopefully find your way back, but you may get lost, you may run out of food, you may run out of light, you may have an accident. All these kinds of things could happen. So managing risks is very much part of what strategy is about. You have to know where you are starting from. You have to know where you're going to go. So where you want to go is your objective, and that gives us the problem that we need to solve, right? Because your strategy, your plan, is a solution to that problem. Okay. And then the third step is going to be what needs to happen in order to get there. You know, if we're here, th the thing that we want is over there. What are the steps? You know, what do we need to cross? What's the first thing that needs to happen? What's the second thing that needs to happen? 
very, very simple. And that gives us then the shape of the solution or the plan. In other words, our strategy. But you can't, you can't jump to step three. You can't jump to how do we get there from here if you don't know where here is and you don't know where there is. Okay. So we'll dig into these steps a bit now. The other thing I want you to think about as well is four quite distinct phases of, uh, of approach or activity or thinking in the context of these steps, right? So, you know, holding your head, where are we? Where are we now? What's the situation now? Where do we want to go? And then what needs to happen to get there? And in the context of that, four phases. Okay, first one is expand. You have the luxury, right, when you are not um, delivering your strategy, when, when you're not rolling it out, you have the luxury of being able to consider multiple possibilities in a relatively cheap way because it's a thought experiment, okay? So the first thing we do, and this applies whatever phase your business or project is in, you think expansively. What that means is, you ask questions, you explore, you consider various possibilities. What if, is it true that? What about, how could we, right? Lots of open-ended questions that help you to, basically you're, gather, you're gathering more information, you're gathering more possibilities. Right, and it's very important. It's like you know the classic brainstorming. Say, so let's let's get as many options and choices and possibilities in front of us as we can. That's expansive thinking. Then, when you've done that, you need to switch to the second phase, which is contractive thinking. Okay, so with all these possibilities, we can't do them all. That would be suicide, right? So we need to decide what what to do, what will help us, um, and and this is just as much about. Uh, where we want to go, as in your strategic objective, as it is about the tactics to get there. Because you can choose your strategic objective. Uh, very often, I think that many of us think that because we are pointing this way, because we have been doing these things for the last few years, because our education is this, and because our parents expect that, um, then our our path forward is pretty much, you know, railroaded for us. You know, we're on the tracks and there's nothing much we can do. The reality is that you have a lot of choice over these things. Um, and in, in the context of that, you get to make decisions about where you want to go. And it doesn't have to be the most obvious thing or the default thing, right? So you, we, come up with lots of possibilities, and then out of those we evaluate what the possibilities are and we make decisions, okay? What kind of business do we want to be? What kind of brand do we want to be? What kind of customer do we wish to serve? What kind of goal or what's the vision of the world that we wish, we, that we wish to create? All of these things are really, really important. And you get to choose them. So more about that later. So expansive thinking is very important to start with so that you know what your options are, lots of options. Um, and it's also helpful to get more brains involved in that as well. It's actually quite hard to do it on, all on your own. And then there has to come a point where you say, right, let's stop that. We draw a line under that. Now we have to make decisions. We decide where we want to go and then we decide how we're going to get there. Okay. Third step, implement. Do it. Start your strategy. I, I know people, I know examples of people who never get out of the strategizing phase. I think it was Voltaire or someone around Voltaire who said, the perfect is the enemy of the good. And if you wait and try uh, to make your strategy perfect, you will never, it, it will never be realized because there is no such thing as a perfect strategy. Part of the reason is because everything is based on time and there are things that you do not know until you set out on the journey, right? The weather may change. You have no control over that. But what you can do is plan, right? So part of strategizing is planning for the unknown. 
and there comes a point where you can't plan anymore you just have to start right we think we uh, we have the information we need we know what we don't know to a degree so we know what we may have to figure out or be uh, alert to pay attention to be open to on the journey and we're going to set off and that's the way to get there that's the optimal approach you have to start all right and then the fourth step is to review your strategy periodically both of these words are very important okay the importance of rev reviewing your strategy is stuff changes right life happens things will happen along the way the market will change the economy will change you know the culture will change the only thing that we know for sure is that change does happen right we can we can know for sure that you know the possibility of there being no change is zero stuff will change we will respond to that change however you can't um you can't keep strategizing because if you're constantly changing your strategy and trying to uh, tweak it and improve it on the fly you will get nothing else done <laughs> you can't roll out your strategy if you keep changing it if you imagine right so i set off to pick up my ebay thing that i bought i got to go to derby or whatever it is and i i set off and my sat nav says turn left and off i go left up the lane if my sat nav then decides to recalculate the route for no particular reason and thinks actually i think it might be nice to go via there and then says oh turn around we're doing something else it's like that's not going to be optimal <laughs> optimal is i need to set off for my destination i need to drive purposefully towards my destination and if something happens along the way right things change i need to stop off a of fuel or whatever then i can make those decisions along the way there are tactical decisions to be made but i you know i can't stop every mile and check whether i still want to be doing strategy number 1 because that would just be stupid it wouldn't be optimal right so we got three things that we are doing that that we need to three steps uh, be honest and figure out where we are right now figure out where we want to go and then figure out how we're going to get there and the phases of approach are think outwards then stop doing that and make some decisions make a start and review your strategy but periodically okay and this will obviously have implications um, for anybody who wants to deliver marketing strategy for clients because we will be seeing as this unfolds we will be seeing the shape of what a marketing strategy service might look like as well so you may want to bear that in mind as we go through two very very important things which we've already touched on one is you can reframe your problem um the problem is how do we get there right and it derives from the strategic objective that you have you do not have to accept the first strategic ob objective the first goal that comes into your head right you may have had it for 10 15 years doesn't matter you get to choose that objective to make sure it works for you um if it is your own business obviously if it's a client's business then you need to find help them to find their the the objective that works best for them and then you know that then reframes the problem the second thing is you also get to design the solution so if that is the problem does that work for us if what we need to do or what needs to happen in order to achieve that objective does that work for us do we want to go through those steps do we want to engage in those activities that that need to happen in order to get there right how does that feel if it doesn't work then you can you get to reframe that you get to change it right and there are always multiple ways to get to any end point there's no right strategy right and that talks 
Be and the reason is because there's no such thing as perfect. The perfect is the enemy of the good. What we want is a good strategy and we want to start implementing it and we want to learn as we go, okay? You can reframe your problem. You can design your solution. You get to do that. It's fine. It's okay. Okay, so this should be very, very empowering. Now, remember we talked about how strategy can be a process and also a product of that process. So we go through this process, these four phases of thinking and these three steps, okay? And we come up with a strategy. So we, we do the strategy work, we strategize, we come up with a strategy. That strategy is, by definition, always 100% of the time context sensitive. Because it always depends on who we are, where we are, like the context, where are we in time and space? It depends on where we want to go, and it depends on what resources we have, and our competition, and the risks, and so on and so forth, right? All of this stuff matters. All of these things make a completely unique problem space, a completely unique situation. And for that reason, right, you cannot buy an effective strategy. Okay? Work with me on this. A strategy is a solution to a particular problem, right? That is about how can this business or brand or organization or whatever get from its starting point to its desired end point, right? You come up with a plan for that. That is a strategy, right? Now, that strategy may fit into particular patterns, it may reuse elements that have worked before, and that is a good thing. It's always a good thing. One of the stupidest things in the whole of marketing is the idea that uniqueness has any inherent virtue at all. It doesn't. Uniqueness is just look at nature, right? Look at evolution. Most uh, evolutions, most innovations fail. That's how evolution works. That's optimal. Right? That's how life works. Most new things fail. 80% or whatever it is of new businesses fail in the first two years. Okay? That's the way it is. That's natural. That's right. That's, that's okay. Um, and the ones that work, work. Now, <clears throat> a strategy that works for one particular business in its, its context of where it started, where it wants to go, and all these other things around it may work for a similar business in a similar context with similar goal. But there is no logic to say that you can take that strategy and transplant it into your business and expect that strategy to work to help you get from where you are now to where you want to go because all of these other things are, you know, completely unique. Totally unique. It's like the the DNA of your particular business. It's your fingerprint is totally unique, right? So, you cannot transfer a strategy. Some examples, and, and right, there's a lot of marketing out there that will tell you, steal my 17 proven strategies for dot, 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 right? Ignore that stuff. There is no such thing as a proven strategy that is transferable to any other context. It's not. So, you know, a sales funnel, there's a lot of talking about funnels these days, right? You know, and I, I've got angry, I saw a, uh, an ad saying you should ditch your website and instead be investing in funnels, okay? Funnels could be great. If, we've been talking about sales funnels for 100 years, by the way. It's nothing new, but, you know, the technology has just accelerated all. But, okay, a sales funnel is an example of a strategy, right? A sales funnel that is implemented for a particular business is a strategy, right? Not sales funnels. A product launch plan or system could be a strategy. When Jeff Walker launches product launch formula like he does every year, he has a strategy for it. None of that means that you could take 
you know, Russell Brunson's particular sales funnel or Jeff Walker's particular product launch and copy it, pick it up and put it in your business and expect it to work because for the reasons that we said, it just can't, okay? These things are no more transferable than a game plan, right? If you go out for a game of football or rugby or whatever your, your game is, you're, you're thinking, okay, well, this is what we need to achieve because of where we are in the table. This is our competitors' strengths and weaknesses. These are our strengths and weaknesses. Uh, we expect them to do this, but they may not, right? All of that is completely sensitive to the context of that game. It's to do with timing. It's to do with, you know, the timing in the season. It's to do with a competition. You cannot take that same game plan and say, well, that worked. Let's do that game plan every game for the rest of the season. Because you will fail. Neither could you say, that game plan was so good, right, in our football game, that we're going to sell it to a rugby team or a hockey team. It, how absurd does that sound? Right? But this happens in marketing all the time. You can't take a journey map, right? I've picked out the, you know, this great way to drive from Sydney to Melbourne, okay? And it takes in all these amazing views, and I'm going to take that map that I've created, and I'm going to sell it to somebody who lives in Los Angeles. It's just insane. Like a personal training plan or a diet regime. It's to do with the individual. What do you want to achieve with your personal training plan? What do you want to achieve with your diet? What kind of body do you have? Right? These things, by the way, are no less unique and individual than any business or organization. No less unique. So why do you think that you can transplant a strategy from one business that works? Look, it's worked here. And say, okay work for me. Medical treatment program, you know. We don't even need to go there. Okay. Everything has its place in time and in space. That could be a poem one day. Um, time and space are very important. Space is where are you? Where are you in, uh, in the market? Where are you in relation to your customers in relation to your competition, right? What is the map, the lay of the land? This is something that we could talk about for weeks and weeks. And also time is critically important. Um, we will talk about timing later on in this, in this video. But just, just for now, let's hold the idea in, in our heads that, that where we are and when we are really matters, okay? Um, just take for example, uh, I'm, I'm really into gardening, I'm very passionate about um, sustainable agriculture and stuff like that. And you know, when you look at nature, you will see that some particular types of plants will, or, or animals, will thrive in particular environments, okay? Um, so I've just planted a, a load of potatoes because the soil is just warm enough for me to plant my potatoes. Now. And also, my soil is good for potatoes, right? So that's place. My garden is good for potatoes, right? Because um, I have a, a heavy clay soil. I cannot grow carrots. Carrots hate it here because my soil is too dense and whatever, right? So, you know, it's great for potatoes. It's rubbish for carrots. And if I had planted my potatoes one month ago, they would f probably have failed because the timing was wrong. So whatever we are doing in our strategy, we need to be honest and sensitive to time and space. Right? So I've got some bad news, first of all, before we carry on. The bad news is, for all the reasons that we've been discussing, no one knows what the right strategy is for your business. I'm sorry about that, but it's the truth. Your business your context, your goals, it's all so unique that there is no right strategy until one is created, okay? So nobody can tell you what that right strategy is right now. It isn't written anywhere. There are no shortcuts. There are no easy answers. 
Fortunately, there's good news. The good news is no one knows what the right strategy is for your business. No one knows what the right strategy is for any business, actually. So all we can do is be honest, realistic, just realistic enough, just ambitious enough, just bold and creative enough, right? We choose our objective. We decide how we're going to get there, right? We make a plan. We implement the plan, right? No one knows what that right strategy is for your business apart from you when you work it out. No one knows the right strategy for your clients until you work it out. And more good news, you already have all the information you need to figure it out. Because you are in the context that you are in. You know, you know, what your clients are, potential clients, future ideas. You know about your competition. You know what your strengths are. You know what your plans are. You know, all of this stuff is available to you right here, right now. Do not expect that any marketer can come along with a magic bean that will solve your dreams and make your dreams come true. It's not going to happen. You already have all the information you need. All you need now is a process to follow. And that's what we're doing. More bad news, though. It's extremely challenging to design your own strategy. It takes a, a type of discipline that not everyone has. Okay, um, and that's just a fact of life and it would, uh, it would be remiss of me if I didn't spell that out. So I, I honestly believe that the, the world is ready for a marketing strategist discipline and profession. Okay, so that's one of the things that um, I and others are working on right now. It is difficult, very difficult to design your own strategy, but it's still worth doing <clears throat> because it's better to have a strategy than no strategy at all. Um, if you're not in a position to get somebody to help you with your strategy, follow this process. It will help. Okay. It's also very hard to stick to a strategy. I'm extremely bad at sticking to a strategy because I'm an ideas person. I come, you know, that's what I do. I'm always looking for freshness, newness. Um, if I look back over my career, it's so many things. If I'd stuck to that particular thing, I would have been a multimillionaire, but you know, that wasn't the right thing for me at that time. Anyway, um, marketing, and in fact, business as a whole, um, there's, there's a metaphor that comes from this book um, that business is like a flywheel. An incredible book, one of the best books I've ever read on business by Jim Collins. It's called Good to Great. What Jim did was he looked at um, stock market figures over, I think, about 50 years. He had a whole team of analysts, and they looked for businesses that outperformed the stock market by a remarkable level of performance, right? And then what he did was he said, okay, well, what is special about these businesses that sets them apart from the rest. And he analyzed, I think, seven factors that all these great businesses had in common and that normal or good businesses didn't do. One of the things was that they appreciated, and it was part of their, their culture and their whole approach, that their business is a flywheel. So imagine you've got an enormous metal or stone flywheel and it's stationary. And you put your shoulder against it and you lean on it and nothing happens. And you keep pushing and you keep pushing. Gradually, you know, millimeter by millimeter, this thing starts to rotate. You don't stop. You keep your effort in that direction. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Then, you know, inch by inch it's going and then it start, it's starting to trundle around. You keep pushing and, you know eventually that flywheel will have a momentum because you've been doing this one thing that you know is the right thing for so long that, you know, the, th the thing takes on a life of its own. It has this momentum that almost can't be stopped. 
sticking to your strategy is extremely important. Being aware of when it may need to change, either you know tactically or fundamentally, is also important, but not probably as important as seeing the job through. Literally lean on that thing, do it. So I think that part of the, the role of a strategist is to keep you on track, to remind you what your strategy is. Now you can be your own strategist. It ain't easy, but it's doable, right? If you write this stuff down and you make yourself look at it every Monday morning, that will be a huge help to you, okay? So it's very hard to stick to it um, for some people more than others, depends on your personality type. However, the good news is it's far easier to stick to a strategy that you have written down on paper than to stick to no strategy at all, okay? So um, it's hard to do, it's hard to stick to, but you know, we should try anyway, basically is the thing, okay? So let's get down to business. I'm going to look at those first two steps of strategy, right? Where are we now? What's the situation now? Where do we want to go? Step one, where are we now? What is the situation? Now you could break this down into a thousand other questions. Um, and if you go through the circuit questionnaire, a lot of those good questions are in there. Uh, so go to benhunt.com slash circuit and that will redirect you to the Google Doc. Um, every question that I could come across that I think is relevant to a marketing strategy is in that document. Okay, what is the situation? All you have to do is be honest. Tell the truth. What is the situation right now? Okay, you, you can fantasize about what you think the situation should be right now Okay, um, but that will be less help helpful than telling the truth about the situation. So some important areas, finance is one, right? What funds do you have? What funds do you need? How much cash flow do you need? All this stuff. Brand and any other assets, very important. So how are you perceived right now? Uh, what intellectual property do you have? What particular skills or whatever? Um, and all of this in relation to the competition and what you want to achieve, because you can then adjust what you want to achieve. And what is the competitive landscape? Basically, what else is out there? What are you competing against? What do you have to do to beat that competition? I'm not gonna go any into any more depth than that right now, simply because you, know, you already know, we already know when we have been honest about the situation, okay? So you just have to do it. This tool may help, the SWOT analysis. Um, it stands for four things. What are your strengths and your weaknesses and what opportunities and threats are out there? This is probably the most elegant tool because it's so simple for understanding the situation right now. Okay, what are we good at? What are we bad at? What are our strengths and weaknesses? What opportunities are there out there for success? And what are the threats out there that could mean failure? Just writing those down, talking them through, can be immensely helpful. So where we want to be at the end of this process of step one is honesty about the present situation, reality, the reality of it. Okay, we mentioned timing before, let's talk about it a little bit more. Um, how much time do we have is very important. In, in some contexts. There are some businesses where time is just not a factor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long we take to get to where we wanna go, right? But, so you need to be honest in your strategy, is time important? You may have, for, you may have a real time limit. You may have a cash limit. Lots of startups may raise some capital and they have to achieve a certain thing in order to be able to raise the next round of capital in order to get to wherever they want to go, okay? So you might have a multi-phase strategy. Um, runway is a metaphor that I use to think, well, okay, how long have we got to build up speed before we need to be airborne, right? That works for me. 
Another context of timing is where are we in the life cycle? Life cycle is highly relevant. Remember, we, you have already talked about, you know, planting crops. So if you plant at the wrong time in the year, if I plant my potatoes in February, they're not going to work. If I plant my potatoes at the end of the year, they're not going to work because they're going to be trying to grow in the, the winter time. You have to do the right things at the right time in order to achieve the kind of growth, the kind of success or result that you want. To everything there is a season. Right? A quote that has a, a lot of um, a lot of meaning in that. that there are times to do certain things when they are likely to succeed and there are times not to do certain things the the, the natural world obviously has seasons and a lunar cycle and you know the more you discover about biology the more you realize how the sun and moon and other things re have a huge impact on the way that nature works but um, the economy and other areas of life also follow a similar pattern. The Chinese have been talking about this for thousands of years. If you study the I Ching, it has these um, 64 steps or phases of life that are actually circular. So, and these 64 steps apply to the seasons a business or project or campaign or you know, battle or relationship or all kinds of things follow this natural progression It's quite a logical process and you know from you know birth to growth and and everything else in between and then starting all over again everything has a season everything is in a cycle and the economy has cycles so um we have all lived through multiple economic winters, right? So in a winter, the crops are scarce, resources are scarce. You know, you can't borrow, it's hard, you know, there just doesn't seem to be as much money flowing around, right? And um, there is always an economic spring following an economic winter, right? When things are hopeful, people want to land, people want to implement stuff. And um, and that's when you should be planting and stuff like that. Then you've got your summer where everything grows really well. Then you've got the time when you need to harvest. Now, and then you've got, you know, you will always have another economic winter to follow. <clears throat> farmers, you know, work extremely intimately with the seasons. So farmers know they have to plant here. Big growing season. Huge effort to bring in your crops and stuff and then in the winter you store you protect you maintain you sharpen your tools you maintain your equipment all that kind of thing but you're not outgrowing stuff and we can apply the same kind of thinking to the economic cycle and within that the context of where is your business where is your business in its life cycle so in a lot of people you know, I, I remember times in, in the 1980s and the 90s when it seemed like we had huge economic booms and people thought, wow, I bought this house three years ago and I've just sold it and I've doubled my money. I must be some kind of freaking genius, right? It's like, I've got fingers of gold. I've got the magic touch. And they think they're just great and they invest all their money in something else because they've had early success. But it wasn't necessarily them it's just the fact that they were lucky because they were they planted their thing at the right time and they got the benefit of it then the economic winter hits suddenly that thing you've invested in may fail and you know if you've gone out and you've you know showered money on cars and homes and stuff like this you may have to sell all that stuff and the smart people who knew that the winter was coming you know, they, they've gathered, they made hay while the sun shone, right? Very important metaphor. You know, in the summer, you gather, you cut your grass, you make the hay, because the hay is going to feed your animals through the winter, right? So in economic terms, you can apply the same kind of thinking, right? When it's easy to make money, make money, but don't go out spending it on Porsches and stuff like that, right? Make your money, 
hold on to it because in the winter time, which is going to come, winter is coming, um, all those people that have bought all that stuff and invested in all that stuff at the wrong time because they did it in the autumn, they're going to be selling it off and then you can buy it cheaper and so on and so forth. Anyway, we digress. Timing is important. To everything there is a season. It's also worth, if you're in the... Um, the business of new technology or new ideas to read up about the technology adoption curve. I won't go into it uh, much now, but this comes from, well, it, the idea has been around for a while. Really, really good book from around 2000, um, Jeffrey Moore's Crossing the Chasm. What he was saying is that markets have this particular life cycle, right, where you get, you know, uh, early adopters who will go out and buy the, the newest thing because it's the newest thing, right? And then you've got um, early majority of the market, late majority and laggards of the market, right? So you've got people who, um, each of these groups look to the previous group to know when the time is right for them to buy something. Right? I'm, I'm not a rabid early adopter. So uh, I remember... I had friends who had cell phones five years before I bought a cell phone because I just didn't need it. I'm not that kind of personality. But there's some people who you know, have to buy the cell phone, have to have the latest cell phone. Okay. Now, I will look to those people to know what phone to buy, but I won't have to go and buy the, the latest one. I'll wait until version you know, 2, 3, 4 has come out, and then I might buy it because I know they work. Um, so any, the, the market has a particular thing, and what Jeffrey Moore was saying is that there's a, a gap between these early adopters and the majority of the market where most of the money is made. Um, and he says it's a mistake to market to the wrong piece, of the, the, the wrong sector in terms of timing of the market. So don't... You know, if you're bringing out a new idea, a new product, new technology, you have to market at the innovators. You know, the people who just have to have the latest thing. And if you start marketing this as a mainstream product, the mainstream will look at it and go, well, how do we know it works? Right? Where are the reviews? Because they don't want to be the first on board. The people with the most money, the biggest market, aren't going to be the first on board. So you have to market at the people who need to be the first on board and that means taking a different approach okay so if you're in the business of ideas or technology it may be worth having a read of this book there's a lot of information there for you so that was step one where are we right now where are we in space where are we in time the second step is where do we want to go now the second whole video is going to be on this question but for now We'll look at it at a relatively high level. What is the high level business objective? Right? So the business objective is not necessarily the same as the marketing objective, but the marketing strategy must serve the business objective. So where does the business want to go and possibly when or by when? And it, I think so many of us think we just want we, we just want to make money and that's not the answer making money is not the answer partly because making money as well how much money is money you know you could you could i'd say to you well if you know you work for me for the next year and i will pay you 10 dollars you've made money right but everything else will fall down if you're working for me for a whole year for 10 dollars it's not going to work so you know what is more money what does that mean um, here are some examples of objectives that don't make sense. Okay, sell more is not a good high-level objective. Why? Because how much more is more? Yeah, selling more could actually be the wrong thing for a business. Make more money by the same token. Right? Grow. Now, as we'll see in in the next video, grow can mean a huge number of things. Now. For most of us, most businesses, their marketing strategy is about growth in some context, but not for all, as we'll see in a bit. So, you know, 
bigger, better, faster, more is not helpful. That is not an objective. It's not fixed. You don't know when you've got there. How do you, you know? How can you know where there is? Right? Sell more is a direction, but not an objective. Right? Same with make more money, grow, whatever. It's a kind of that way. You may choose to use SMART, right? So what, what is a SMART goal? It's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based, something like that. I don't particularly use it, but it, it makes sense to say, okay, it's specific, we've nailed it down. We can tell in you know specific terms when we've got there, measurable, um, and all, all that kind of stuff. And, and time-based is important. That may work for you. I prefer the having a beer test. I learned this off a, uh, a former consultant that I was working under. And, um, and what we would say to a client is, okay, imagine if after, give me a time period, a year, two years, six months, whatever it may be, we are sitting in the bar at whatever conference or in a hotel, and we're having a beer and we're saying the project has been a success. Great, clink. You know, here's to us, we did it. How can we say that we did it, right? What does we did it mean? And so you could say, well, okay, we've, we've sold one million or whatever, or we've made so much profit, or we've got so many more offices or members of staff or clients or, you know, whatever, what does success mean? And you can answer that for your own business. Because it's you, you get to choose, right? Is that a an inspiring and interesting and appealing goal for you? Or if you're doing it for a client, you ask them those questions. If we do that in this time frame, will that constitute success? Okay, so if 20 new clients constitute success, would 10 clients, would we still be going, we did it, if it's 10 clients? Okay, what about 15 clients? What about 14, right? You can, you can use this test to say, well, yeah, 14, I'm not really happy about 14. Great, perfect, and so now we know 15 clients, yeah? Yeah, 15's good, right? So whatever it is, like, when can you clink those beers and say, we did it, right? Another thing that's, that's very important is to acknowledge risk. Not everybody is in the risk business, right? Uh, some, some of us don't want any risk at all. Some of us are happy to risk it all on a regular basis. I don't know what your situation is or what your client situation is. So, you know, you have to ask the questions. How much risk can we handle? How much risk do you want to handle? And you'll notice that a lot of this stuff actually comes down to emotion. It's not just all about numbers. A lot of it's about how it feels. So, you know, how do you feel about risk? How much risk? What can you afford to risk? What are you not prepared to put at risk? All great questions. So let's just quickly go over some examples of some specific strategic objectives. Well, categories of strategic objectives. Um, establishing a business or entering a market is a great objective, right? It's, it's relatively broad. You would want to be specific about it. Well, wh what does establishing a business look like? Um, so another thing about the, about the timing of businesses as well is that businesses tend to, you know how some animals tend to kind of grow to a particular limit, then they have to shed their skin and then they can grow again. Uh, businesses tend to be like that as well. They actually have multiple cycles of growth within their overall growth. And um, so what you find is you, you get to a certain point and then a, a significant change needs to happen, which quite often involves investment of some kind. So you need new ideas, new people, more money, something like that, in order to be able to break through into the next you know, level of growth okay now so establishing a business is early phase in the life cycle entering a new market may constitute one of those 
you know, growth cycles, what is needed in order to enter that market. Both valid goals, both need to be more specific, okay? Survive is a perfectly valid um, strategic objective, if it's real. And this is why we're just talking about honesty. So, you know, we can clink the glasses and say, well, the business is still running. We haven't run out of cash. If that is what success looks like, let that be your strategic objective. Right? Then our marketing strategy needs to serve that objective. The wrong strategy can be catastrophic to a business. Right? There are some businesses that, that need to gain clients or market share or whatever in order to succeed in the long term. And if you uh, sacrifice what's really important in the long term for short term uh, objectives like cash flow or new clients or, or profits can be very, very dangerous for a business. Um, some businesses should lose money strategically. Okay, Let's take Amazon for an example. Um, it, starting in the mid-90s, Amazon had a business strategy that they were determined to lose billions of dollars on a regular basis. Right? Amazon deliberately lost money by selling books for a few years until... The, and when the book sales started to break even, Amazon went into the DVDs market and, you know, now Amazon sells pretty much everything. But Amazon goes out to gain market share. Amazon's game is about market share. They want to be the place where you go to buy stuff online that's relatively mainstream. Okay, and in order to get that market share, because okay, they know that if you're number one, you've got a huge... What's number two after Amazon? No one knows, right? What's number two after eBay? No one knows. So um, they deliberately burned billions and billions of dollars. And that was the right thing to do because of the strategy. The strategy was market share, right? Grow, as we've... Uh, I've hinted, we're going to talk about this a lot more in the next video. Growth can take many, many forms. Or reversing a decline. Our business is failing for in whatever reason that we say. And we want to reverse that. Okay, Perfectly good strategic objectives. Market shares, we talked about, you know, the Amazon example. Um, market share is a, a good uh, example of a long-term objective. Right? If you're going after market share, you're in it for, you're in it for the long game. Getting investment is absolutely a realistic strategic objective. Startups very often will use angel or seed funding in order to get to a certain point where they can prove a certain thing. Right, That's goal number one, so that they can then get first round of funding, second round of funding, and so on. Um, and that could be completely different to an another similar kind of business. Um, and that's because they are a startup, because investment is the way that they work. This, this is just about acknowledging the lay of the land. And this is why you can't take one particular strategy and apply it to this business, that business, and the next one. Because these contexts are also different. There can be emotional or soft goals as well. I'll, I'll give you an example. Example could be, I've been working my butt off for... 20 years doing this job. Um, I want to go to semi-retirement and do more writing for next year. By, by In 12 months' time, I want to be basically living by a lake and just writing, you know, every morning. Right? Soft goal, emotionally driven, perfectly valid, perfectly good. So to say to that kind of business owner who, who you know, in their heart really wants that... Oh, what you need to be doing is you need to be out on the circuit, you need to be running, you know, Facebook Live stuff every day and blah, blah, blah. Could be wrong. Yes, it might make more money, but making more money is not a universal, not the universal 
strategic objective. So there you go. And of course, exit. You know, somebody may say, I want to build this business to a certain level where I can sell it or where I can whatever, bring on partners and, you know, in some way or, or take it public, cash in and walk away. Perfectly valid strategic objective. And there may be others, you know. But again, this is all, it's all just comes down to the same thing, telling the truth. What are the facts? What's the situation right now? Just be honest about it. And remember always, you get to decide on what your goal is, what your objective is, and you get to design the solution to get there. And if that solution is not appealing or inspiring, you don't have to you don't have to go to market with it. You don't have to launch. This is the beauty of doing your strategy now because it involves gray matter and paper and pen. Right? And you get to change it very, very easily. Just erase the whiteboard and start again. You don't have to be the business that you are now. You don't have to be the brand. Brands can change. Your your market, your customers can change. What you deliver can actually change. We're going to be talking a lot about this over the coming sessions. Um, you have all the control that you allow yourself to have. Right, and I'm talking as though we're talking to your business, not uh, for uh, delivering for clients. But your the scope of the success of your marketing strategy is only constrained by the constraints that you accept. All right, so we're going to have a, a lot to say and a lot of stress on the, the amount of choice and movement that you have. And you don't have to engage in lots and lots of choice, right? then it may be the case that you've been doing the business that your father did and his father before him and you love doing that and you just want to keep it in a state that you can hand on to your own son. Fine. Right? If that is the truth, that is the truth. And um, all I could ask you to do is to acknowledge that there may be other choices and, you know, you can say, yes, there are other choices and I choose to do this. So you have the control. So, briefly, in summary then, the process begins with clarifying where you are. That's the first step. Be honest about where you are. The second step is tell the truth about where you would like to go. And then the third step is going to be how you're going to get there. Um, it's very exciting to dive into tactical things and, you know, ideas. But it's really important that we've covered this. Now, in the next session, we'll be going really deep into the overall business objective, particularly looking at growth and starting to look at different patterns that strategies can take for getting there. And uh, in the rest of the sessions after that, we'll be looking at specifically how you can get there from here. Okay, but we've done some amazing work already um, on the groundwork. And thank you very, very much. I appreciate the time that you've spent to uh, come along so far. And I look forward to um, going through the, the rest of these sessions with you. Thanks a lot.